Yo, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reading Red Dragon... I'm not reading it. I already read it. I'm going to be reviewing Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. This is book number one in his four-book Hannibal Lecter series. This book came out in 1978. Now this copy that I've got is a re-release just recently from a British publisher. I liked I liked the British versions. These I'll have the four Hannibal Lecter books in my next book haul because the British publisher had a nice collection of four of them that looked real nice. So I got it. We'll talk about that during my next book haul though. Um what is it about? What is the Red Dragon about? I imagine a lot of you have probably already read it. Or at least you're familiar with who Hannibal Lecter is, that's for sure. Um, this came out in 1978, like I said, and it's dated. You can tell it's dated. I mean, just the police procedural work. I work, I've been in law enforcement now for like 14 years. I, I get things and I know how things are. Um, the police procedural stuff in here is a little bit wonky and dated. In fact... Um, as they're investigating the scene, right at the beginning, they're investigating a murder scene of a dead family. And um, the killer has left blood, his own blood, his own DNA, his own semen, his own hair. It's almost like he wants to get caught. But back in 78, they couldn't analyze anything this and pinpoint it. To, there was no DNA. There was a, you know, they, they could only tell that his blood was AB positive and, and that's all the semen sample could supply. And, but I mean, I mean, they were looking for fingerprints. At least he was, at least the killer was smart enough to hide his fingerprints, which is back in the day was the only thing that would give you away. And now as I was, uh, you know, and he's called the Tooth Fairy Murderer, which we're going to get into a little bit. Um, but he's sloppy as hell. Oh, my God. No wonder there were so many serial killers back in the 60s and 70s and 80s. It's because technology now catches them after their first murder. They just don't get a chance to be serial killers. You know, if you think about it, back in Ted Bundy was snatching people right out of a public park right in front of everybody, and, and they couldn't catch him. And I mean, I mean, nowadays, there's so many cameras on everything. Not only that, but everybody's got a cell phone with them. Every house has cameras in it. Um, every stoplight has a camera on it. So if you, you, even if you do secretly kill someone and flee the murder scene, the cops just have to go to every stoplight around the murder scene and just figure out, ah, Probably this guy in this car that's speeding away. Then went here, 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 here. They could trace you all the way back to your house just by following stoplight cameras. I mean, this is why serial killers just don't exist anymore. It's because they get caught after their very first murder. They just don't get a chance to keep going. And it's because technology has just made it so it's so easy to track everybody everywhere at every time. Can we... Find fault for Thomas Harris for writing this in 1978 and not knowing how things would be 50 years later. No, I was about to say, yeah, we should shit all over him for that. But I decided, no, we would give him, we would give him a pass. We'd give him a pass. The Tooth Fairy Killer, anyway, rant over. The Tooth Fairy Killer. That's who they're searching for. Well, the Tooth Fairy Killer is very upset that they call him the Tooth Fairy Killer because he's like, that's the that's a lame name. You know, and now the now the uh, police, to their credit, are keeping some of the evidence, you know, secret. You know, they don't want to, because the Tooth Fairy Killer has become, like, internationally popular. And so they get a lot of people calling in to 911 and claiming they're the Tooth Fairy Killer. But they can't, those people, those fakes, can't really describe some of the particulars of the murder scene that, the, that, that, that would lend the cops to believe this is the right guy. Well, the Tooth Fairy Killer, he's like, he does. He, le he starts communicating with the police. Not only does he start communicating with the police, but he starts communicating with Hannibal Lecter, who is a notorious serial killer already in prison for crimes previously committed. 
and he's kind of a fan of Hannibal Lecter, so he starts divulging some of the secret, super secret parts of these crimes to Hannibal Lecter. And so now the investigators are talking to Hannibal Lecter. They're, they're, there's, there's a whole cat and mouse game between these messages that are coming into Hannibal Lecter and back and forth through the prison. It's just great. The thing that of these books is as creepy as the Tooth Fairy Killer is. Because he's creepy. He's certainly creepy. He likes to call himself the Red Dragon. Um... But everybody keeps calling him the Tooth Fairy Killer, which makes him spins him up more and more and more. In any way, he's got this sort of he idolizes this Hannibal Lecter, and um, Hannibal Lecter sort of becomes the star of this book, much as he became the star of Silence of the Lambs, and that's why this whole four book series revolves around that character of Hannibal Lecter, which is interesting because I wonder if. Thomas Harris knew that when he wrote this in 1978, that this side character, Hannibal Lecter, would be the star of the show. He must have known because in his second book in the series, Silence of the Lamb, he also had Hannibal Lecter in that story. But, I mean, these books are, I mean, he is the star of the show. Doesn't matter who the Tooth Fairy murderer is or the Red Dragon murderer. Doesn't matter. His name is, uh, what's his name? Dollarhide. That's his name. This is his real name is Dollarhide. And there's some parts of this book that they're flashbacks to Dollarhide's youth in Missouri in the 1930s. And those were the only parts of this book I didn't like. I don't know if we really needed that. Um, uh, I don't think this is as good as Silence of the Lambs. I think Silence of the Lambs is almost the perfect thriller. This... Uh, has got some great writing in it. I mean, this this is a gem all of its own. Uh, I mean, if this was a ruby, Silence of the Lambs would be like a diamond. I don't know. I'm bad with metaphors, people. I am bad with metaphors. Um, I think you understood what I was saying. Anyway, I give this... I actually really enjoyed reading this. Um... Uh, it makes me want to go ahead and watch the two, both movies that were made of them. One was called Manhunter, and the other one was called just uh, Red Dragon, starring Anthony Hopkins and uh, Edward Norton and um, Ralph Fiennes. So I think I might rent that, or I don't know if you can even... There are no blockbusters or Hollywood video. I have no fucking idea how I'm going to watch that movie, but I'd really like to um, watch Red Dragon now. Um, I give this... An 8 out of 10, I thought it was uh, pretty, pretty damn good.